if I would bid a hand differently at match points versus imps, I usually bring that up in most of my classes uh, if I might do something different otherwise. You know, figure that you're gonna deal with most of your hands the same way and we're just you know, splitting hairs a little bit about uh, what format um, we're playing. So, um, but I, I just wanted to, to address that since he does say in there that, that, that he's gearing, gearing the discussion more toward, toward imps. Um, could you, I would say we probably. Could you define an imp? I mean, like just. Well, I don't want to get into all that. No, but but, but we're, 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 we're just. We're, 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 yeah, we're, we're just talking okay. about. about we're just, yeah, we're just talking about pair, scoring for pairs versus scoring for, for teams, okay. which, which does impact your bidding strategy a little bit. Um, so, um, but most of the time, you know, at our, uh, at our local clubs, we're playing pairs. So. So for me, I, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking of first, if it even really matters. But I usually mention both, and in fact, there's a hand that we're gonna talk about in two weeks, right out of the book, where Woolsey is, is, just spends a couple of pages talking about, well, this is the best contract uh, if you're playing pairs, and this is the best contract if you're playing teams for the same, you know, for the same hand, and, and here's why. And we're, we're gonna talk about that. So I, I, just, want, I just wanted to, you know, just in case there was any, um, um, you know, uh, just wanted to make sure that, that, you know, that, that you didn't feel like there was some sort of inconsistency there. But isn't it strange so, that he's gearing up with first teams? I mean, uh, that, that, that he is? No. I mean, when, oh. when, I mean, when, when Kit Woolsey plays, I mean, Kit, Kit Woolsey, uh, I, I probably doesn't play at his local pl club much, if, it, if, if at all. Uh, if Kit makes an appearance playing bridge, he's playing in a national or world championship event, and most of those events are team events. So, um, so no, that doesn't necessarily surprise me. Um, and I mean, the other thing is too is I, you know, I, while I suspect that uh, a strong majority of people who uh, read his work are duplicate players, um, you know, if um, if if, uh, if if people who are more just you know rubber bridge players. Uh, would be looking at the book. Well, you know, R Rubber Bridge is far more, um, far more like uh, team play than it is like pair, like pair play. So, you know, where the emphasis is on bidding and making your games and we don't worry about over tricks and things like that. Oh, so, I see. Um, are you rolling? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just making sure that it didn't, didn't, want, didn't want to say, say, say anything. Uh, didn't want to say anything. Uh, too important if it wasn't going to be captured on video. <laughs> Diane wants to watch later. She's not here today. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so today um, we're going to spend a, a, a majority of the time on this instructional versus informative bids business, um, and then we're going to get into some captaincy uh, issues, um, and then these themes from today. Um, we'll also, you know, r return in, in the next couple of weeks, too. We'll, we'll try, you know, when we can to, to point out, um, uh, you know, uh, or, or I'll ask you, you know, is this an, inform an instructional bid? Is this an informative bid? Um, because, you know, that, that is going to help you with your approach. Um, uh, and, and I think that also is going to help you um, with it's, it is tied, tied to, to captaincy. Um, so, because when you are the, the captain of the auction, um, you are more likely to be, uh, you know, making instructional bids and, um, you know, or, you know, demanding specific information, uh, from, from your partner. So what exactly is the difference? You know, what, what is this, you know, these, these kind of two general categories of bids? Well, let's start with the instructional. Um, an instructional bid, um, you know, it's pretty literally uh, referred to that way. Um, you're, you're telling partner what to do, or you're demanding a specific response, um, or you are just placing the contract. And the simplest one of all that Wolsey mentions is just an auction like this. What is the three no bid when your partner opens one no and you jump the three no? That's an instructional bid. Uh, this, this is a true close out bid 
you know, partner, you don't get to bid again. I have commanded you to play three no trumps. If you have heard everything you need to know with partners one no opening, a partner has 15 to 17 balance, you don't think there's a major fit or you've chosen not to pursue a major fit, even if there's a slight chance that there is one. If your hand looks like three no, and you want to bid three no, and make partner declare three no, you just do that. That's, that's, that's instructional. It's totally irrelevant why you have done this. Three no can look a lot of different ways, can it? I mean, it can be truly balanced hand where, you're, where you honestly know, yeah, you know, three no is the right spot. On the other hand, it could be something a little different, like uh, you know, what if what if three no uh, is um, ace king queen sixth of clubs and out, and you're like, well, yeah, I'm not positive we can make three no, but this sure looks like six winners, and partner has 15 to 17 points over there, and they're all outside of the club suit, so I think partner can probably scrape up three tricks outside of clubs, and we'll take nine. Yeah, so we can look different ways, and it it doesn't matter you've made what you think is the best decision. Then if it's not the best decision, that's something for partnership discussion later. You know, get into, well, you know, maybe we should bid this differently or, you know, maybe we shouldn't, you know, just settle for three no, maybe we should look for a better contract. Yeah, that, that's all for, you know, uh, there, there might be some debate to it there. But the fact of the matter is this is the auction we had and so um, one no bidder, you have, <laughs> you, have, you have no more input into this auction. <laughs> a similar type of thing would be after a preempt, right? <coughs> and here there may be a little more uh, variability to what four hearts is. So you opened three hearts. You told me that you probably had a seven card heart suit and a, at least a weakish hand, a hand not good enough to open one heart. Maybe it looks more like two hearts, but you probably, again, you probably have a seventh heart rather than just six. So based on that, I mean, I know a fair amount about what your hand looks like. I don't know your exact suit quality for your three hearts. I don't know if you have a card outside of hearts. You may, but you don't promise that. But in any case, I've made an instructional bid when I raise you to four. And I say, this, this is where we belong. <clears throat> now, am I bidding four hearts to make? Or am I bidding four hearts because my hand is really weak and I have heart support and I'm just extending this preempt one more level because I think the opponents want to get into the auction. The answer is it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> you know, you here, three heart bidder, if you end up declaring when the dummy comes down, you will see what type of bid four hearts was. Um, but four hearts was, uh, presented here uh, on a need-to-know basis, and you didn't need to know. <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, again, an instructional bit. And yeah, these situations where it's like, okay, you told your story, this is what I'm doing. So that's, that's what an instructional bit is. It's, you know, it's just, it's, it's more of a, it's, it's basically a, a, a command. Um, you know, and, and some instructional bits like these might end the auction, um, some might not. <coughs> So, uh, you know, if you do something obviously like, um, like bid for no trump as key card, that's a different type of instructional bid, right? So you, you are asking for specific information about partner's hand and you know, and there's a method by which um, you must answer by partnership agreement. An informative bid, well, the first bids here are informative bids, aren't they? right? One no is the informative. It's partner, I have 15 to 17 balance. You don't know every detail about my hand. You don't know if I have a four or even a five card major. Um, but I have given you pretty specific information about my hand. Um, and same with the three hard bit or even or two hard opening as a, as a week two. Those are informative bits. I'm telling you something about my hand. Um, now, those are more specific informative bids. Um, we're gonna go through these hands here um, in a minute. 
uh, and, and, and look through the full auction on an informational or uh, in, in, informative or instructional basis. Um, some bids are both. Uh, and Woolsey talks about the Jacoby transfer being one of the best examples of a bid that is both at the same time. So if you open one no and I bid two diamonds as the transfer to hearts, um, it's instructional in the sense that um, you must accept the transfer, right? I'm commanding you to bid two hearts next. And usually the only exception to that instruction is if you choose to super accept the transfer. But for the, mo <laughs> for the most part, we're looking at a, a force bid situation, right? That's instructional. But it's also informative, right? Because two diamonds says to your partner, I have a five card heart suit. Now, there are other informative elements that we don't know yet, specifically strength. Right? We don't know about the high card strength. As we know, transfers can be extremely weak or they can be hands that plan to look for a slam. That will have to wait until the next round of bidding. Um, but it's both at the same time. <clears throat> now, these are pretty clear cut. These are the ones that we deal with all the time. Pretty easy to see. Um, you know what what is informative uh, what is instructional and what you know and and what we should be doing what we're going to get into a little more today is some hands where yeah, maybe you have some decisions to make um and you actually have an option you can take an inf an informative approach to bidding the hand or you can take an instructional approach. Sometimes one is clearly superior to, superior to the other, but other times there's discussion to be had. It's like, well, I could do this or I could do that, and which, and which path is best? And we can try to come, come to a decision. Um, we have one coming up a little later where, you know, we just say, well, you know what? I mean, we could use Jacoby to no Trump or we could use a splitter. Either one would be reasonable. Um, so, uh, you know, this is not necessarily, it, it's not always going to be a clearly, you know, this approach versus that approach. Yeah, you know, this is not always an, an easy black and white, you know, right, right or wrong kind of thing. Um, but we can try and arrive at what we think is best. So if we look at this hand, and this is one from the very beginning of the book that we looked at last week, this, this pair of hands where east and west, um, could get to uh, hopefully a, a good diamond slam. Um, and we went through this whole auction last time, but let's, let's look at the bids and decide what kind, what kind of bids these are. So when West opens one spade, well, what is that? Informative or instructional? Informative. Informative. <clears throat> Now, it doesn't provide a whole lot of information, right? <laughs> uh, one spade provides the information that you have at least a five card spade suit. And presumably at least 12 points since you opened the bidding. But that's about it, right? <laughs> Not a lot of information yet. It takes a while to get some momentum with, with these things, right? And, and, get, and get going. And we're, we're, you know, we're, where we can really piece the information together and, and do something with it. So a responder is going to start with two diamonds, right? Informative? Oh. Right? <clears throat> All right. It, tell, it tells partner, I, I have an opening hand, right, since we're forcing the game. <coughs> That's probably the most important part of the information. Um, and it <coughs> says to partner, I have diamonds. It doesn't say much about suit quality or suit length. We, we know it's at least four diamonds but not too much else, right? Limited information, but that's all right because we're just getting going here. Okay, but we said West rebid here was two hearts, right? Five spades and four hearts. Two hearts is? Informative. Informative, right? Partner, I have four hearts, at least four hearts, since it could be five. I have at least four hearts. 
along with my five spades. Still doesn't say much of anything about high card strength. Because remember in our two over ones, we, we generally assume that partner, you know, whether we have opened or responded, we always just assume that partner has a minimum for their bid until they tell us otherwise. So strength shelling tends to come a little later in the auction. All right, but we're all, we're all, we're all informative at this stage, right? Okay, the next call from East was to no, right? Still informative? And if you remember from our, our Bringlish dialogue on this hand last week, what, what did we think was the, uh, the most important piece of information about to no here? Actually, there were a few pretty important. You have a stopper. Got a, yeah, the club stopper, right? Since we bid three suits naturally, but we haven't bid clubs. But we now tell partner, okay, we, we must have a we must have a club on her since we're offering no trump. <clears throat> and it also permit it also presented information via negative inference, right? Mm -hmm. It told partner, I don't have three spades and I don't have four hearts. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bid two no, I would have done something different. Or six diamonds, maybe? Um, would you bid three diamonds if you had six? You, would, you probably would. Okay. On the other hand, remember that when we bid three suits and we don't have a major suit fit, the priority does shift to can we play no trump? And while you could bid three diamonds, or you, you, know, you could show the six diamond. Um, that might put partner in a little bit of a quandary uh, if partner doesn't have club stock, right? So, um, so we go. We could kind of go go either either way with that. All right, and then we set opener in the third round of bidding. Now we merged with three diamonds, right? Are we still informative? Yeah, we're yeah. we're completing pattern, right? Yeah. So we we've, we've now shown our five spades, our four hearts. We don't have a fifth heart or a sixth spade or anything to show, um, but we are showing specifically three diamonds so that this will convey to partner, okay, I, I have probably have a singleton, could be a void, but most likely a singleton club. Um, so remember this accomplishes, you know, this is what, you know, finally we have found a fit where we could play our slam um, and also alerts partner to hey, if we do play no trump, if you're not gonna be interested in slam, and we are just going to settle for game, you better know that I have a singleton club and make sure that your club stopper is up to snuff for this. Right. And we said at that point, knowing, knowing the pattern, that East would in fact be interested in slam and probably knows enough at this point to bid for no next. 